Okay, it was time for a new updated video on how to apply primer, foundation, concealer, powder, and bronzer. You like how I used all the empty stuff? Anywho, um, the old video that I have on YouTube has our old foundation on it, and we've had so many requests for the new photo filter foundation in a tutorial, so here you go. So I don't have any makeup on now. I'm gonna pull my hair back and I'm gonna go over color matching and application. So let's start with the tinted primer. I will say that I just put self-tanner on, so I'm a little bit darker than normal right now. But I'm going to show you guys how to appropriately match the tinted primer shade and the foundation shade. We do not match our face or our neck when color matching. You can see how much lighter my neck is through here, and that's from years and years of sun damage and some more redness that I have on the cheeks, sorry, on the chest and on the arms. Um, but you cast a shadow here so you don't typically get as much color. So you want to make sure that you are not trying to match your neck or your hand. You wanna match this so that once the makeup is on, you're one human. So let's start with the light primer, which I'm guessing I am right now, but I'm going to show you something that is too dark. I bet you I have one in my drawer right here. Let's see, yep, here she is. When something is too dark and you do the little color spot on your chest and it turns orange, that means that's not right for you. Just because it was right in Let's say June, doesn't mean it's gonna be right for January. So make sure that season per season, you are looking at the color matching. So I'm gonna get up in the mirror or the uh, camera here. And you see how the top one is drying more transparent, like it's just blending and melting into my skin. And do you see how this one, as it's drying, it's going a little bit orangey? You'll see throughout the video, it'll keep getting darker. If it looks like this, the color is not right. If it looks too white, that is also not correct. You need to make sure that you're using something that, when applied thick, disappears into the skin. So let's start with the tinted primer. I'm gonna to start towards the center of my face using a foundation brush, and I'm going to swipe. Swiping shears the primer, gives you an even veil of coverage, and then twisting fills in. So you can get more of the product and twist around the edge of the nose, or our poros or mucho largos, okay? Mucho grandes, and that'll help fill that in. So people say, oh, does your foundation hide pores? It's more about the technique than it is the foundation or the primer. So swiping is gonna give you that sun protection all over your entire face, avoiding the eye socket area. Do not put primer or foundation here, okay? You do not want things on your eyes creasing. So take a look at the difference. Do you see how that's toned down a lot of my redness and rosacea? As you're applying this, don't be alarmed if it looks dark compared to here. We're not going there yet. I'll talk about that in step four or step five. So swiping, avoiding the eye socket area. Do not put foundation primer on the eyelids. Don't put foundation on the eyelids. Don't put concealer on the eyelids. Twisting around the areas where your pores are larger. For me, it's around the side of my nose and the apples of my cheek. And then just kind of buffing it against the jawline. So you can see that just gives you a really pretty glow. Even though this is oil free, it does give a really pretty glow because it has hyaluronic acid. And if you don't know what hyaluronic acid is, good luck spelling it and look it up on the Google machine, okay? Now we are going to use the Pale Ivory Photo Finish. So this foundation came out a few months ago. Um, it is now in the top 10 selling items of JKC and it is the best foundation you have ever dried, okay? It's awesome. The nice thing about this foundation is it makes you look as if you have been filtered by a photo filter app like Facetune or even Photoshop. If you don't wanna put it all over your whole face, you don't have to. If you just have rosacea and you just want a little bit extra boost of coverage around the apples, you can put it there. If you have melasma or sun damage, this will give you the full coverage without looking or feeling cakey. Um, you use the same brush that you use to apply the primer. You can see how I'm just kind of like tapping, swiping. Um, if you have an area that needs a whole lot more coverage, like maybe you have like acne scarring or melasma, do a little bit more tapping in those areas. Um, but I'm just kind of blending it out because I've done so many lasers and peels on my face, you can barely see any of my sun damage anymore. But my rosacea is always a thing. Um, it's actually having, I'm having a good rosacea day, so it's not too red, but you see how my face and my chest are flowing really well? Again, we're not looking at this area. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Next step is the under eye concealer. So I'm going to use the Nude Bisque with the Brow Lift Concealer Brush. I'm gonna grab some of this and when you apply your concealer, 
you want to go up against the inner corner of the nose like this and out towards the end of the eyebrow. It's kind of like the triangle of light that other brands talk about or people say, do I go all the way down here? I don't think it's necessary to go that far down because you're going to put blush there anyway. But just keeping it really close to your lash lines. If you have any redness underneath, it'll conceal that. And then using your finger to texture it to give it a little bit more of a skin-like appearance. Appearance. This kind of uh, breaks down the product, makes it a little bit more creamy. So it melts down and looks more natural. So look at that. Nice little lift I got there from that concealer. I'm gonna get some more on the doe foot applicator. And this is not a full liquid concealer. It's between a liquid and a cream, but it has to be liquid enough to go into that packaging. So it's a little bit more liquidy than our old concealer in the scroll up too. But I do like it better. It is a little bit more hydrating, but the colors are the same. So if you used to use Nude Bisque in the old, you could use Nude Bisque in this one. We also have the option of Satin Skin Stick if you're looking for something not quite as heavy as the one I'm using now. Um, good for beginners or good for women who don't wear a lot of makeup. Um, just to kind of tone down redness, the Satin Skin Stick from my line is also a good option. There you go. So I got a lot of nice brightness underneath my eyes and then you're going to set with powder. So don't be one of those that's like, oh my God, I never use face powder. It makes me look old. You crazy? No, it doesn't. It's the type of powder that you use. So make sure you use a powder that is not a double wear or a foundation powder. I just got one that's a little bit more full. I have, I always have backups. It's like I own a cosmetic line or something. It's a whole damn department store in here. Um, but you can see how when I'm putting the powder on, I'm starting with a tap, 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 tap. And then you buff to get between the fur on your face. I am very furry. Whenever I do a derma planning, it's like a whole hamster comes off my face. But you can see how that dried down the product so it's not wet. So you want to glow, but you don't want to look wet. And you definitely don't want to transfer on other people's clothing when you go to give them a hug or on your own clothes or hands if you touch your face. So setting powder helps with longevity. Just choose one that's not quite as heavy or drying. And this one you can see still gives me a glow. It's not totally matte. See my forehead? Yeah, but it's not gonna come off. Next step is bronzer, and I like to use the sheer buffing brush. Um, we do have one called the flat contour that puts on a little bit more coverage, but I'm not into that for bronzer. So I just want enough to kind of create that neck lift and pull the darkness into the light spots. So on one color, see how that's all pulled together now? Yes. And look, when you look straight on, look how much thinner my neck looks on this side. So just like painting on a canvas, I'm creating a shadow and I'm pushing this part of my neck back, right? Adding a darker color as a shadow, but also it's marrying my face and my neck to my chest. So I'm all one. Sorry, cut me off. Let me finish. Okay, so I've got three colors of bronzer, one called Fair Contour. Fair Contour is for anyone who's got like a light to fair skin tone. Um, it's really hard when you have fair skin to find a bronzer. Um, that doesn't look oompa loompa orange or red on you. So you'll love that one. I'm using golden only because I um, self tanned today. And look how by adding that shadow here, this golden contour just pulled everything together really nicely. If you have any more red in your skin tone than I have, you're going to be the warm contour. So that's for typically the Caucasian woman who tans really, really red. She's got a lot of redness or old sun damage here or just naturally your, your undertone was pink, um, but you have a tan, so warm would be best for you. But golden is definitely the most popular shade. Um, it's like most bronzers on out on the market with that golden undertone. So you can see how when I'm putting the bronzer on, I'm not only using it here, which is the most important part, I'm also using it places on my face that I want to shadow in. I have a very large forehead, so I go around my hairline, kind of buff it into the hairline and right around the edge, and that helps pull everything together. So there you go. This is the primer, foundation, concealer, powder, and bronzer tutorial. Follow up with some of the other videos to see how I do a smoky eye and lash application. Thanks for watching.